So how big an issue is type 2 diabetes in Australia? Oh, I think it's the biggest single health issue that we have. It's the major cause of blindness, the major cause of kidney disease, the major cause of cardiovascular disease, the major cause of amputations. Unfortunately, it's something that, you know, you, you often feel OK, you know, until you're, until you're a fair way down the track. So it's something people need to get tested regularly to make sure that their, uh, that their blood sugar levels are OK. Dr Peter Bruckner is speaking not just as a medical professional, but from personal experience. My background is in sports medicine, and I was actually uh, in England working at the Liverpool Football Club 10 years ago. And um, if you'd asked me then, was I healthy, I'd have said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pretty healthy. But the reality was that I was uh, overweight, significantly overweight, like a lot of middle-aged men. I'd put on, you know, half a kilogram a year probably for 30 years, you know. And uh, in retrospect, I was clearly pre-diabetic. Uh, I wasn't quite diabetic, but I had a thing called a fatty liver, which is a sort of pre-diabetes uh, thing. I had uh, high uh, insulin levels, high triglyceride levels. And as I said, I was very, very overweight. But yet, I'd been on this supposedly right diet, low fat, and I exercised regularly and so on, and yet I'd kept putting on weight and, and getting more and more unwell. And I started to hear a few whispers that there were people challenging the idea that fat was the, the enemy and suggesting that maybe it was sugar and, and starches and carbohydrates that were the enemy. And uh, so I started reading, and uh, the more I read, the more I thought, oh, gee, you know, this is interesting. And I thought, OK, time for an experiment. So I decided I'd have a crack myself at going on a, on a what we call a low-carb, sort of healthy fat, healthy protein uh, diet. And uh, in three months, I lost 13 kilograms of weight. All my metabolic problems disappeared. My fatty liver that I'd had for 10 years completely normalised, triglyceride levels, everything went back to, uh, to normal. But more importantly, I just felt so good. Peter's transformation supports a growing body of evidence that by reducing our intake of carbohydrates, we can not only prevent type 2 diabetes, but can even put the disease into remission. There are a number of programs, the one in the UK and the one in the US, that's been very successful with remission rates of greater than 50%. Now, this is for a disease that we're told is, you know, there's no cure. This is a chronic, progressive disease. So I spent last year with a couple of colleagues uh, putting a, an app together. And in that app, you've got all the information you need to tackle your type 2 diabetes. One of the first people to sign up to the Defeat Diabetes app was Victoria's Michael Footer, who was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes six years ago. Well, I originally got told that diabetes, and their words were, will affect your eyesight, affect your feet, affect the nerve endings in your body. So I was a bit shocked because I was still playing sport. I was still fit and active. I still played soccer. I still walked everywhere. I was using swimming pools and all that. I didn't have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or most of the other things that are attributed with type two. So I was sort of baffled. Although Michael's lifestyle was healthy, like many Australians, his diet was high in two categories of carb, sugars and starches. Pretty much all processed foods have sugar in them. Yeah. You know, so things that we always thought, you know, I always thought were, were healthy, like uh, fruit yogurt or uh, muesli or a muesli bar or you know, all these or sort of things. Breakfast cereal. Breakfast or, or breakfast yeah. cereal. Well, yeah. you know, I, I call them, you know, cereal flavoured sugars. You know, yeah. they're not breakfast cereal, but they're brilliantly marketed and they taste good and they're cheap. Yeah. So sugar is the first thing. But just as important as sugar is starches. OK, so we're talking rice, pasta, potato, those sort of uh, yep. things. And basically what a starch is, is just a whole bunch of sugar molecules stuck together. So it's absorbed from the gut into the blood as glucose. So yeah. sugar is exactly the same as, as if you were having sugar. Yeah. So that's where I think we've gone wrong. People sort of get the sugar thing, but they don't understand that starches are basically sugars. Having spent years on a high-carb diet, Michael found that it took some time for his body to adjust to the Defeat Diabetes program. I would say at the end of the second week, I felt awful. Yes, my sleeping had improved and I wasn't as tired, but internally I just felt something wasn't right. I was drained and I sent a message through to Defeat Diabetes, which they answered quickly and said, yes, it's perfectly normal, just struggle through it. And it's what you have to do. You've got to resist the temptation to pick up a sandwich. When I reached the other side or when I pushed through all the nausea and everything else, it virtually changed overnight. I couldn't believe it. And I really did feel on top of the world. 
people with an average glycated haemoglobin percentage of 6.5 are considered diabetic. Within six months of going on the program, Michael has reduced his average from 8.8% to 5.1. In reality, I've put diabetes into reverse and it's controlled mainly with diet. My doctor is amazed with what I've managed to do. Um, he read the last report and said, that's fantastic. Michael is far from alone. 62% of the program's early participants have successfully reversed their diabetes, including South Australian GP, Dr Ian McIntyre. There's really no bad part to it. There's no downside. See, if you're taking medication, there are always side effects from it. You can be tired, you can be constipated, you can have sleep disturbances. There's all sorts of things that you can have. But with this program, my uh, blood tests have come right back to the point at which I'm now being considered for reduction in my medication, which I find really exciting. What we're doing is giving people hope, because at the moment, if you go to your doctor and you're, you know, he says, oh, look, I'm sorry, you've got type 2 diabetes, and you say, well, what can I do? And they say, well, you know, there's no, there's no hope for you. You know, it's just going to try and control the symptoms. Whereas we're saying to people, with plenty of evidence to back it up, there is hope.